uh, I don't think there was any way that any of us could vision how this was going to spread, how this was going to just take off in all directions. It's not just the United States, it's worldwide. There was a, a culmination of a whole lot of, lot of different people's ideas coming together. And it came, to, came together amazingly well. I don't, I, mean, I don't know what the impact was, but I have an idea. There's a few thousand people who over 35 years have impacted millions. Millions. In 1972, I gave birth to Christopher. He was four pounds, seven ounces. The uh, nurse brought him to me and said, don't get attached, he won't live. And I said, yes, he will. I knew he would never grow up. I knew that just by holding him, looking at him. So I made every day count. Chris was my little buddy. He really was. We were planning on coming back to Phoenix for a visit, and along in mid-Texas, I noticed Chris just, he wasn't himself. Something is just not right. We took him right in. The doctor he did a little pinprick on Chris and came back a short time later and said he has leukemia. The poor doctor just looked at me and looked at my brother and my mother and wrote down an address, St. Joseph's Hospital, and said, go there, they're waiting for you. I made a vow that night to even be, they say, a better mother, um, to even have more fun with him. We just kind of went from there. We really did, day by day, um, week by week, whatever we needed to do. Community college class, I'd met a lady by the name of Kay Austin. Her husband happened to be a US Customs agent, which I didn't know. And she says, you know what? Come on over to my house, we'll study together. Maybe I can help. As we got into our studying, the front door opened and there was Tommy. And Chris jumped up with more energy than he had had the whole time he had been there. And um, I think he told Tommy to, you were under arrest or freeze or something. Turned over and he said, freeze. I'm a police officer, so I froze. He got off the couch and he carefully searched my front pockets. And he was satisfied I was clean. He holstered his weapon. He stuck out his hand. He said, hi, I'm Chris. And from that moment on, we were buds. We were best friends. We were pals. We absolutely loved having them be a part of our family. And Tommy began to talk to Lynn at that time about um, doing something special for Chris. Ron Cox and, and uh, Mike Steven from DPS and I were together. Tommy started telling all of us the story about Chris. So there was a lot of tears shed that night. And uh, Tommy said that, uh, well, some of you guys any of you offered to help out when the time comes? I said, you bet, I will. In mid-April, Chris had gone out of remission, and it was coming very close to the end. And I made a phone call, but to Tom Austin. And I said, Tom, if there's any way possible to make that promise come true, now is the time. Tom got on the phone to Ronnie Cox I said, Ronnie, it's time. I said, hey, do you think we can give this guy, a, this young man, a, a show and tell around the helicopter? And his answer was, I don't know, we'll give him a ride in it. I called Chris on Friday, and it fell out very weak drawings, very weak. I said, Chris, how would you like to have a ride on a real police helicopter on Monday morning? Instantaneous, that voice changed. Oh, Tom, you're joking, you're joking. Well, somebody notified the news people, so they're gonna be filming. I thought, you know, this is starting to get a little over my head, and I think our director may wanna hear this before he sees it on the news. So I called Alan Schmidt, and I said, Alan, here's what I've done. And I said, yeah, we can do that, and we'll tour him around and all that. 
And Ron says, I was introduced to this little boy named Chris, seven years old, and we're gonna do something special for Chris today. And I would like you to be standing by with your motorcycle. Six o'clock in the morning, the phone rang. Hello. Hi, Tom, this is Chris. You hadn't forgotten, have you? I said, no, I hadn't forgotten. Well, I went over there about 20 minutes to late, and he was already out in the driveway. And I wish you could have seen the look on his face when I drove up. He knew it was real. A smile from ear to ear. I got there and set up the motorcycle at our headquarters building just as the helicopter was coming in. He was given a ride in a real ranger helicopter. They landed at the Department of Public Safety. And there we went over to uh, Colonel Schaefer's office. He walks around, high fives everybody, introduces himself. We stood him up on my desk and uh, I swore him in, handed him that certificate, and pinned a badge on his, uh, on his coat. It was wonderful. It just, Chris was such a proud little boy. I mean, to him, with that badge, hat, everything, he was a policeman. He really was. This was something that I was totally helpless to do, but Tom had pulled it off with the help of Ronnie and help of all of the DPS officers. On May 2nd, he said, Mommy, I'm not feeling real good. On May 3rd, he passed away, just that quick. There was a unity born with these officers and what they did. We had lost a fellow officer, we meeting the Arizona Highway Patrol. I was called into the commander's office <clears throat> And he said, we have learned that Chris is gonna be buried in a little town called Kwani, Illinois. He said, I would like you and another motorcycle officer to go back and give Chris a full police funeral. When Scott and Frank came back from um, the burial and the memorial for Chris in Illinois, we were talking and I was asking Frank and Scott, how did this come about? How did it all go? And we were just chatting and they were telling me how it went. And we all said basically at the same time, there's more children out there. Why don't we go find them? I love the idea of it. And I, I love what it brought those families. I've often said it, it was just a snowball effect. The snowball rolling down here, hell, it kept getting bigger and bigger and bigger. It's amazing. It's absolutely amazing. Make a wish is not mine or anybody else's. Make a wish is a thing. Uh, <laughs> I truly believe in the power that made this happen. I, don't, I think there are a lot of people that can't even imagine how small it was and how little money there was. So to sit here and say, happy birthday, make a wish, you are now 35 years old tells me that the original founders and the original board members and all those long nights, it was all worth it. We happened to hit on the most universal emotion there is. It's totally universal. There's no language boundaries, no country boundaries, no philosophy, no attitude, no political boundaries. It's universal. The people who are there today, 35 years later, carry that torch, same torch, same rules, same all kinds of same things that we set up when we sat down and said, how are we gonna do this thing? For